thing. You might need a theme song for your shit. Check this out. Hey, turn this right now. Let this shit seep in. JackThriller.com. We creep in. Snoop Dogg to the left. Jack Thriller to the right. JackThriller.com. Do it all night. Hit the website. Hit us up real quick. If you're trying to get hooked up with a bad super bitch. I got out. Yeah. Yo, Mike, you ready? Come on. Come on, man. Let's do it, man. Hey, yo, today on New Jack Thriller City, man, mm. I got one of the kings oh, speak of on. DC comedy. Damn DC, though. The whole you comedy made, period. Made, of, of comedy, yeah. period. Yeah. Man, you done seen him on Comedy uh -huh. Hype. You done seen him uh -huh. in Baps. Man, you done seen him on How to Be a Player. You uh -huh. done seen him on Four Minutes. Mm. And now you seen him on my show. Mm -hmm. you, you, you done seen him on P.S. Panic. Come on, all day. Come man, on. this is one of my favorite podcasts yeah. in the world. Mm -hmm. Man, this is my player partner. Man, my friend. Uh, 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 my, I'm, I'm gonna be calling my confidant, man, because you know what I'm saying. I can go tell him some mm -hmm. things. Yeah. He's gonna keep it to himself. Yeah, of course. And, you know what I'm saying. He can tell me his experiences and everything, and tell me the right thing right. to do. You know what I'm saying? He teach me how to stunt. Mm -hmm. uh, he one of the first people that I had ever met in comedy. You know what I'm saying? That uh, I I I uh, I, 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 I can't even front. Your name is Kyle. I, I, I got a uh, I, 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 I got I got starstruck. I got starstruck. I got starstruck. Mm. I can't, I can't makes believe sense. Makes sense. that we even we really even buddies. Mm -hmm. I, I can't even believe that he be calling me and talking yeah, to me yeah. like he know me. I'm a charitable individual. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Pierre. Hey, yeah. Let's go. Let me tell you something right now. I appreciate the stuff you see. You said you see me on. If I play my cards right, you'll see me on Chrissy. Okay, I never. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all give it up for us. one of the baddest DJs in the land, man, DJ Wizard Craig, hey, hey, hey. a.k.a. Yes. DJ, I am somebody. I am somebody. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. Yo, Pierre, yeah, what's up? What? First of all, I'm proud of you, brother, on some real shit, man. Look at this production, brother. You know what I'm saying? You came to my show when my show was small. You supported it, man. You said something on my show I'll never forget. So I have a sh my show, P.S. Panic Room. It was in its infancy stage in the beginning. And uh, you came on the show, and you sat there, and you said something. I was like, damn. You said, P., I'm probably only here because you ain't got no other guests. And it, and it hit me in the core because I was like, this nigga know the real. Because it was. No more guests that week, nigga. You came through because I had no one else to get. But I appreciate because you was there. <laughs> so I appreciate you being there. And now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 yeah, you know, you know what's wild about that shit, too? I'm going to tell you something. Hey, I was just moving back home okay. to Atlanta, uh -huh. and, you know, and, and uh, uh, I, I, feel like, I feel like Oprah Winfrey okay. Okay. off of uh, Color Purple. Oh, really? Yeah, when I see you, Miss C, right, right, right. I knew there was a girl. Oh, there it was. And I, I, I knew that, you know, everything was going to be all right because I'm, you know, I'm home now. Miss Sophia home. Come on now. Miss Sophia home. And, and it just, because it, it was a big deal to be on your show, sir. Man, I appreciate you coming, brother, for real. It was I, a big I, deal. All jokes aside, no, I appreciate it. I, I love you, brother. I, I've seen you for so many years doing, grinding in the comedy clubs out here in Atlanta. I remember you came out here, you know, um, just doing, you know, doing you. And then you went to, this is 50. I was like, this boy doing the damn fizzle, man. And then you came back home and you came on my show. Then you got your own show. You got more people in your room than I got in my whole damn production and shit. <laughs> <Well>. <laughs> That's hey, true man. shit. Hey, man, I, I, I got four people in my whole room. Everybody. And one of them is me. <laughs> Nigga, shit. <laughs> Go on with yourself, boy. You got, you got real cameras and shit, okay? Them the real joints. I'm going to look crystal clear on that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you see my desk, though, bro? You see Come on now. With the LED lights Ooh. on there? You see the LEDs lights around the room, though? Nah, you got, you got your own car. When you got your picture of your face on the car, I didn't want to step on your face, man. <laughs> I had to walk around the whole damn room. And... No, thank you for not stepping no, on no, my I, face. No, no, I can't do that, bro. Too much respect. You, you see, I, you, you see, I, uh, I don't know if you know this, Pierre. Okay. But I'm a really big Michael Jackson fan. Really? Yeah. I, I couldn't have guessed. Yeah, really, really, really big Michael Jackson fan, okay. man. You know, I don't like. I don't know if you got what I was trying to paint the picture of. You know, when I when I dressed my mannequin up right here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. This, mm -hmm, but this mm -hmm. is Mike. 
Uh, you, even on the floor right there, that's the off the wall uh, cover. That's me on the okay. off the wall. I put New Jack Thriller City I right there. I saw it. I saw it. I with the bow tie. You know, and y- y- you see, yeah, yeah. You're okay. And so you know, the whole reason why I even named the show New Jack Thriller City is because I went to New York. And whatnot, and I came back home, and so it's a new city because I'm I'm here, and all the okay. people that's around me that uh, made me, uh, 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 that cultivated Jack Thriller mm-hmm. or or Honey Buns as I used to be. Well, I remember them days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I call you that, but I remember them days. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what it's all about. This is this is the core of the past, present, and future just coming together. Nice, you know. Nice. Yeah. Give them a round of applause. Yes. I see. I ain't ain't advanced as you, bro. Like, what? like I ain't like I don't I don't have I don't have any games. Uh, oh, you ain't right. I ain't got no segments and stuff like that like, yet. I'm Chrissy on it, man. We spin wheels and guests yet. And yeah, you got like you that. got yeah. a lot of cool little yeah. things on your show, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. You do too. You know, you got the newsletter and stuff. I, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, let's be real with it. But go ahead. I got a DJ. Yeah, I got a DJ. <laughs> Damn the DJ. No I, I got DJ Wiz. Yes. Wiz Thank you for being here, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. So you know, <laughs> I got conversation. I okay. tell it interviewing. Um, yes, you do. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here for that's it. One of my strong points. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's start from the beginning, Pierre, man. All like, right. All right now. You know, I remember the first time I ever seen you, and it was definitely on Def Comedy Jam. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, one of the jokes that definitely stood out for me, I, 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 I can't. I can't ever forget this because it is. It tickles me to this day. Mm-hmm. Is man, yo. You, when you, when you got shot, and you yeah. said spread these bullets equally. Mm-hmm, Is mm-hmm. that a true story? You really got shot before? I got shot three times at, at the same time. Uh, I make the story quick. Me and my boys were hanging out, and we said one of my boys used to work at a place called Gene West. That's merry-go-round from the old heads. They know what I'm talking about. And he used to work there, and we used to, I used to steal the same shit. He like he say, steal me my size larger. So I go in there when he's a manager, I take the stuff, and I tell you why it's important to the story. So you know, light skinned Albie Shore looking guy. I was I, I was light skinned, but I looked more like Special Ed at the time. So we had Albie Shore and Special Ed hanging out. Old school head, know what I'm talking about. So one night I had this, we had the same outfit on with, with three or three or four other boys, and we were going and we were going by McDonald's. We parked parked in McDonald's parking lot. Was going in there, messing around, seeing some girls at, the, at McDonald's, and going cross street to a place called Roy Rogers. Old school for those who know. On the way coming back, you know how you have the, the drive through in the car, the car right there. You know, you got, kind of got to walk around. They got a little gate that you got to walk kind of around so you don't get hit by a car. Well, some guys almost hit us. We're like, oh, what the fuck? Whoa, 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 whoa. They said, what's up? They pulled out into the gr- parking area and started woofing. They were Jamaicans. So I ain't hear, I ain't understand half the shit they were saying and shit, you know what I'm saying? But it was what it was. This is, you know, 80s and shit, right? So um, we wanted to fight them. They were stalling. The cars left, but three of them stayed back, acting like they wanted to fight. Then I'm in, trying to get in the car because I can see the dude didn't want to fight, but he really was stalling. I didn't know he was stalling. All of a sudden, I see some guys come over the street, come across the street, and uh, the dude said, burn them. And I, you know, I'm, I'm between some cars, my boy. Yeah, burn them. That's not, whatever Jamaicans say, burn them. On. And I heard, pop, pop. And I, it sounded like a starter pistol because I never heard a real gun. And, you know, you know in the movie's like, bah, bah, bah. real gun don't sound like that. It sound like fireworks. Pop, pop, pop. So I thought the nigga had a you know, starter pistol until one of my boys said, oh, shit. And he got hit and pushed me. And then we all just started running. You know, friendships break up around that time. You know what I'm saying? You might be hardcore and cool. I love you, man. But when that gun start firing, people just start running. I tried to run back into the McDonald's. The nigga owner locked the door. It was like, no, nah, nigga, drive through is what you want to go through and shit. You know, I'm like, motherfucker, so I'm trying to run around. And they dude was just shooting, pow, pow. People were jumping over cars and shit. It was crazy. And I'm running around the back. And he, first he shot me in the leg. I'm running. Then he, then he, uh, I'm running. He shot me in the back. I was like, God damn! And it felt like a, a stun gun, you know, like electricity. I was like, what the fuck? And I'm running. Then he shot me in the hand, and my hand popped up, and I saw his blood, and meat. And she was like, God damn! Because you know, I'm dumb enough to think back in the days, you know, somebody shoot you can duck and shit, you know, pew, pew. You know, that's what I saw in the movies. And, you know, all you hear is pop, bing. You know, you get hit. My, so by the time, by the third shot, my, my, I saw that meat there. My insides want to turn around and say, bro. Okay, man, I ain't the only one out here now, you know. I got a couple of friends they've been shot too. And my other nigga hiding behind that car right there. No disrespect, but don't waste them all on me. I get that you don't like me. No more need. We, uh, three's enough, okay? You know a three's company? Three's enough. <laughs> and I kept on running there, nigga. You know, it was what it was and shit. And I guess, you know, he must have ended and ran and stuff like that. And that's how I got shot three times. Damn, man. Yeah. How old was you? 20. 
What did your mama say? Uh, well, she wasn't there, so she really didn't say much. But when I, <laughs> but when I, but I'm telling you, I remember I bought a pair of New Balance. I'm from the, I'm from, I'm from the East Coast. New Balance is a big, big shoe, and I bought them. This is back in eighty, what is it, eighty seven, eighty eight, something like that. I had um. It was $105. That's expensive back in them days. Yes, it was. Hell yeah. It's so, expensive in these days. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, you balling. Man, you balling. So, okay. Hey, bro, I, I, I will. We do Reebok Classics, and they for $42. Because you want to, not because you have to. Easy with that bullshit, okay? Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what happened was, I remember I, remember I was in, I, they took my shoe off, and I get to the hospital, whatever. After I come out the hospital, you know, they give you shit back. I need them shoes. I run that one shoe back, man. I had blood on it and shit. I was like, run that shoe back, bro. Shit, I need that shoe, you know. And I had one with a little slight blood on it and one not, you know. But they were burgundy. They were gray and burgundy, so you couldn't really tell the blood spots. So, yeah, that's how I realized I was with my shoes. I wanted that shoe back. Damn, yeah. bro. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. th- th- so did you move? Well, Because no. I always be telling niggas, when you get shot, man, you pull the move. Well, move from where? Nigga, I, wasn't, I don't live at McDonald's. Nigga, shit. <laughs> well, move from where? From the McDonald's that I was got shot at? I lived another place. I, and I knew, I didn't, I'm telling you when I found out who they were. I was reading a book one time about a group called the Shower Posse. Yeah. Yes. And they, the Shower Posse. Shower. Okay, there you go. You got shot by the Shower Posse. Well, I, I, I deduced it because what I found out was Jamaican groups back then, the gang members, if they're in the same city, two different ones, they'll kill each other off. Like one person got to go. One group got to You can't be the same. People can't be in like Riverdale. You know, you know two Jamaican groups can't be in Riverdale at one time. They got to move to another yeah, city. Yeah. Well, about five miles away from where I got shot at, about three months later, I'm reading the book. I remember when this happened, five people got killed in this apartment complex, Lansdowne Village apartment complex. Everybody from D.C., DMV know what I'm talking about. And um, they, I was reading the, the book, the Shower Posse book, and the guy killed them five people there. Mm-hmm. So they were Jamaican part of five, the, the, the Shower Posse. It's about a five-mile radius, the same city. So it had to be the Jamaican, you know, because we don't have Jamaicans. We didn't have Jamaicans in my area at the time, and they were Jamaican. So I deduced that the person, five Three months later, who killed all five people were part of the shower posse, mm-hmm. so it must have been part of the same group. So mm-hmm. I deduced it, came to the conclusion, I don't know if you know what deduce means, but came to the conclusion that um, they shot, uh, you know, probably the shower posse shot me. And I have no beef with the shower posse. <laughs> to this day. No, no, and shit, nigga, I ain't, at that day, nigga, okay? <laughs> okay. You, you, I, you forgave them that day. Well, I, yeah, the good Lord told me to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Word, God. So it wasn't no no boys in the hood shit where you no. was like, yo, j- yo, dope. Let's go get these niggas. No, no, no. Them was more niggas than me. And it's funny because my friends always be, people be like, yo, man, you was gangster, nigga. You gangster. No, nigga, the nigga shot me was gangster. I'm nigga running. The word. I ain't gonna front. I wasn't no gangster. <laughs> and was you no was the only the friend gangster. that got shot. Who? <laughs> no, a couple of guys got shot in my crew. No one died, though. Okay. Somebody got shot in the arms. Somebody got shot. But I took the three. Do you know what the the origin of this um, the shooting was, or was it? Do you feel shit like shit talking, nigga? I'm just, I'm just here walking out the uh, going past the drive through. You know, sometimes you walk through the drive through out the drive through. If a car's coming, you come out that little door. It might, it might hit you. You got to walk around a little bit. You know what I'm saying? They were pulling mm-hmm. off, and we almost hit us. So, you know, my boys was about that. You know, we were about the shooting, but they was about that fighting. <laughs> they was about the shooting, so we separated between you know what you're about. And so when that when that when that gunplay goes, shit get different. Hey, th- th- that's what I always tell people too, man. Mm-hmm. Pierre, like, you never know what another nigga own. Because everybody that ain't ain't with that fighting shit. Oh, come on now. Everybody's not not with that. Like, their that, that road, and this is something I learned from 50 Cent too. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, he was like, I don't road rage with niggas and stuff because, you know, sometimes when you road raging people with people and whatnot, you're getting mad at them about something that don't have nothing to do with you. That's mm-hmm. why they road raging. Mm-hmm. And they, they, they you could be the victim of something. That mm-hmm. um, is completely that, that has them on the edge, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And if I'm gonna snap back at somebody, it's gonna be something because it's gonna be something because I I I, I wanted to be in that mood mm. to make that happen. Mm. I wanted to have I wanted to have that to be a deliberate a deliberate move on purpose mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so you kind of like gotta let people do what they would do what they do. And well, whatnot, and let them roll rage. Right. Well, here's a tr- here's here's a real yeah, thing. Because I think it's called. You remember that movie Crash? Remember people, to me, people's right. people' life will crash into you right. if you allow it to right, crash right, into right, you, right, right, mm-hmm. or you can just keep it moving. Well, well, here's the difference. Here, first of all, hurt people hurt people. Yeah. Okay? 
That I know for a fact. Yeah. If you have nothing going on in your life or nothing to live for or nothing really to care about, if your life's not doing well, you get that you'll you'll stop and, and entertain that bullshit. But when you have Good life going on. Like, I am so blessed. I have great people around me. I have things that's happening for me. You can call me a nigga, a bitch-ass motherfucker. As long as you put your hands on me, I'm going to walk away from it. Why should I risk it for some nigga who ain't shit? Yeah. He ain't got nothing to live. I ain't no bitch-ass nigga. Touch me, and then we'll turn the situation to what you want it to be. But verbally, I don't give two fucks about that. And I don't care, you know, if, you know, I... I'm, I, I carry all my stuff. I, I, I got two licenses to carry. But I don't want to pull that out, man, to kill another young black man. I'd rather walk away from that, man. Now, you put your hands on me or you put your pistol out. I got to do what I want. You know, what's, got, what's got to be done. But before that, I got too much to lose. My friends and family would be disappointed in me, man, if I got locked up for some bullshit. They're like, nigga, I, you know, I'm feeding a lot of people with, my, with things I do. You know what I'm saying? My production company and so forth. So why am I going to cut it off for some motherfucker who don't care about his life? Mm. Why would I do that? That's a mm. stupid. That's the stupidest shit to be. I hate when black folks. My people do that shit. Like, man, you know, that nigga said they don't pop it up. Why would you do that? You got a family. You got shit to lose. Why? Cause he disrespected me. Fuck him. Especially like if you're driving. I remember when I was driving. I used to like nigga pull me. You know, you pull out in front of me. I'm like, hey, hold on. I pull up next to you. What the fuck? Man, let you go. Y'all don't know what just happened. Don't nobody happen between me and them know that he almost cut me off. You know, I'll just pull on and just keep it going. You'll never, you'll, you'll see me later on that day. What's up, P? Hey, things good. But I could have pulled over and got into some shit and shooting the motherfucker, trying to run each other over and shit and been in jail. Like, what happened, nigga? Nigga pulled over on me. You almost ran me over. He got in my spot before me, letting him in my spot. What? What? I was about to pull into a parking spot. Nigga jumped into it. I was like, fuck all that. What? Man, I don't know that, man. Those are niggas who don't have nothing to win, to lose. You know what I'm saying? They don't have nothing going on. So I tell the young cast man, well, anybody, let it go. He's not a sucker for letting it go. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You right. more of a man, yeah. way more of a man. You're way more of a man to walk away from bullshit. Way more than a man. But you now, know, we we too old to be punks. We too old to be disrespected. Uh, and you, and hopefully the, the the people that's disrespecting or trying to punk us live to be our age. Oh, uh, there you go. There you go. You know what I'm saying? You, know, you hey, it ain't nothing wrong with just telling the motherfucker, hey, you got it. Yeah, there you go. Keep you it got it. God, God bless you. There you go. <laughs> There you go. I'ma stay saved. There you it go. Is Ooh, what there it is. is. And alive. Yeah, and alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gotta go home to my family. There you go. Um, I mm -hmm. I think I was um reading something or I seen something where you you you, you got one kidney, um, Pierre? Damn, nigga, you my medical researcher, nigga? <laughs> my doctor? Yeah, I got one kidney. I was gonna ask you for a kidney. I, I ain't got one to spare. So how did, what's going on? How you lose your kidney, man? When I was 10 years old, you know, I had something wrong. I didn't even know what was wrong what was going on with me. And um, went to, you know, went to the hospital, and they said my, my one other kidney wasn't functioning well. It wasn't functioning, so they took it out. But here's, When he was 10? I was 10, yeah. So you, you oh, and right now, yeah. how old are you? 32. Okay, so you've been living mm -hmm. for 22 years yes. without a kidney. Yeah, 42. Uh, well, for, for, you, you've been living for, for, for 32 years. 52. You've been living for 52 <laughs> years. It, I'm, I'm alive, nigga, okay? <laughs> going, yeah, yeah. With just one kidney. Yeah, but here's so the thing. So it can be done. Yeah, put that liquor down. You don't need another kidney. Put that kidney. liquor down. So Put that salt down. Okay. And you can live. You living with one eye, nigga. You, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck? You can do it, right? I didn't even, I didn't even think about it like that. <laughs> there you go. I didn't even think about it like that. Okay. I didn't even think. You. <laughs> there it is. It's the same shit. Yeah, it's the same, same shit. shit. You don't need two eyeballs. You don't need two kidneys. I just, yeah, I just found that okay. shit out. Yeah. But I, you, there okay. you go. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So your diet has been a certain way for all these years. Hasn't been a certain way, but I don't drink alcohol. You know, I, I try to avoid. You've certain never, things. you've never. I drank have drank alcohol. Yeah, I've had drink. I've, I've drunk alcohol before. Yes, I have. But now, you know, you're talking about what's the degree yeah. that you could do it with one kidney? Oh, well, then I don't know. I, I ain't trying to find it. I'm trying to find a way I can live. <laughs> <laughs> Not how I can skate on the edge and how far I can go before I can clip over. Fuck it. That's, that's some straight nigga shit to ask. I'm sorry. I don't know, can you do fucked up shit? I don't even fuck it. Because I'm you a drinker. Right? You ain't going to believe this. I'm a drinker. Okay. I, oh, I drank on your show before. You got two kidneys? I got two kidneys. All right then. You know? Drink yeah. on, brother. Shit. Sure. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> um, Chris, can you refresh my drink for me, please? Oh, oh, oh she refreshed. Oh, hell no. That case refresh mine. Shit. 
Yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. Yeah, I love it. it. He's a mother. Man. Yeah, she's so attractive. <laughs> what? She's so attractive. And she's really, hey, she's really attractive in person. You know, some people look good behind camera. Yeah. In person, she's fine too. Yeah. Well, hold on. What you saying? Oh. What? What you saying, Chris? I I'm, I'm saying through the lens. People see her on the lens. They're like, oh, she might look different in person. Okay. I'm okay. She's on, yeah. Okay. Well, don't try to. <laughs> Chrissy, no, I'm learning too much hey, shit about Chrissy today. I say wrong. I say I'm learning don't too much style. shit. Don't put, don't put me in. <laughs> well, what I say wrong? I said something wrong. I said she look good in person too. Hey, hey, I, I, I just seen the, the, you weren't here for the last show. The Chrissy was showing out the last was show. No, I was not. Doing the most. Hey, yeah, hey. she was doing the most. Uh, I thought I knew Chrissy before Ooh, the last wee. show. I was like, Damn. oh my god. Damn. Yeah, Chrissy. I'm quite sure you told the story, but how'd you get Chrissy? Because I might want to look for one of those. Oh, I met Chrissy through my homeboy. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, then. There it is, then. Who's your homeboy? I need to connect with him. Uh, Thank you, Chrissy. Yeah, come. Thank you. Uh, Chrissy. Uh, uh, Chris, uh, right, okay. okay. You can, you, you, you are welcome to tell him. Okay. Yeah, so my homeboy, um, he he's a uh, he's a, a rapper. His name is uh, Smoke from okay. um, Field Mob. Oh, Smoke, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, 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 smoke, yeah, yeah, yeah. I met him, met him through her. The dark skinned one. Yes, the dark skinned yeah, one, like smoke. Tyrese. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you. So know, Smoke is the connect. Smoke is the connect. Uh, smoke yeah, is the yeah, connect. man. Shout out to Smoke. Yeah, shout out Smoke. Yeah, yeah, man. Smoke, it's one of the hottest rappers in the world. I'm about to get in your DMs, Smoke. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, but basically, you can live with a lot of parts. You know, one, you know, certain situations. You don't need all of your. Here's shit. the thing: yeah. just do the best you can to eat healthy. You know, we, you know, in our communities, there's not a lot of healthy situations and stuff. But try the best. You know, let's be okay. real honest. There's a lot of liquor stores and fried fish and fried chicken places. Stuff that's not really detrimental to our health. You know, when you live in a white area, they got more motherfucking salad places and you know, just fresher stuff. Just as us as people, just try to consume a little more water, not as much salt and fried stuff, and you know, we can live longer. You know, that's. That's all. That makes sense. If you, if you don't have number another five or ten more years to your life, you got your loved ones that can love you for five or ten more years. So there you go. Yeah. Makes too much sense. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Hey, let's let's talk. Um, I want to where, where I want to pivot to real quick. Uh, let's pivot to. Let's start at let, yeah. Let's start at Def Comedy Jam. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Fuck that. Let's fuck start that, at yeah. comedy. In DC, because you, you're from DC, yes, right? Sir, yes, sir. Right. I've yeah. never heard the Pierre origin of comedy story before. Oh wow! And that's I've never heard that before. Okay, okay. And I feel like I know you. Well, okay, okay. Well, you do know me. You just don't know everything about me. I, you know what I'm saying? Man, I, I'm a bitch ass nigga. I yeah, true that. True that. True that. Okay. Well, well I, I got bitch ass nigga friends, so it's all right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was in high school, and I saw open mic night. And I went to a vocational school, so I was during the day. I was I finished a project. I was looking through the newspaper, and I saw open mic night, a comedy club. So I decided to go down to on a Friday to a comedy club. It was a Friday, and uh, this brother was he was performing with some white guys. It was a regular night, you know, regular comedy show, three comics. And he said, "Come on back on a Thursday, write some jokes. Come on back Thursday, we have open mic night." So I decided to come back the next week. I didn't know what jokes were. You know, at the time, I used to be a Joner. I could, we called it Joner, Snapping, Ranking, Bagging. You still do. Okay, y'all call it Joner? Okay, yep. Joner. I'm real good with that. And um, so I, uh, and, and, oh, the comic I talked to there, he was like, just write five minutes of jokes and come on back, you know, on open mic night. So I'm driving home, like, what the fuck is five minutes of jokes? Like, what is five minutes of jokes? I didn't know. Um, and this is also when uh, Eddie Murphy was all the rage. Everybody, you know, wanted to, I, I knew I wanted to do what Eddie Murphy was doing. I didn't know how to get to that point. And this is D.C., and D.C. is a government town, so everyone's supposed to get a government job. And he's gone, work there for 30 years, and then get a two-week vac you know, two, two vacation every year and live next to your mama in a townhouse, and that's your life. I ain't want that. You know, back then, remember, early that time, we didn't have Def Comedy Jam. We didn't have comedians blowing up. All you saw was Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy, you know, very few comics to see that they can do it. No young comics. And so I went down to the open mic night, ran into some some major hard hitters, Chappelle, you know, the people who was like Tony Woods, Dave Chappelle, uh, Wanda Sykes, uh, Tommy Davis was doing it around that time, Martin Lawrence was down there. All of them were down there. Young comics, you know, just comedians and some white people and white comics and so forth. So I went up there on open mic night, and um, I was actually funny. But how I did it, I did it, I did it the wrong way, the right way. What it was, I didn't know how to do jokes, what jokes were. So at the time, a guy named Stephen Wright was popular. 
comedian named Stephen Wright, white boy. If you ever remember the movie Half Baked, he was a guy laying on the couch all throughout the movie. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, the, that's Stephen Wright. Yeah. Very funny, dry humor. He had a, had an album out, and Rodney Dangerfield had an r- album out. So I went and took their jokes. I, you know, had an album. I listened to them. I took their jokes and made them urban. So I went back to the comedy club and killed. Everybody like, damn, you funny as hell. I'm like, this ain't shit, you know. <laughs> and so um, I would do the, their kind of material for a while. And then the way I changed it to my own humor, because I didn't know, again, I didn't know what, how I could tell the story, like how what jokes were. I was running late to it, because you sign up at 6 o'clock, you had to be back there at 9 o'clock. So I went home, took a shower on the way back, because I had the second, pull the second name, because you pull names out. Out of 30 names, I pulled out second. I'm rushing there, and a cop pulled me over. I was like, come on, hurry, and gave me a ticket. And I ran, and it was like, yo, you up next. Come on, man, you, you, you up next. I ran, I ran on stage and told a story about the cop. I was pissed off. And people started laughing. And I'm like, That's just, that really just happened. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just pissed off. Before my show, before I get to my act that I cultivated at the time, I just told that story. And people started laughing. I realized, hey, I can do my own shit. Like, y'all laugh at this? This is something I'm just telling y'all about? So then I started taking those jokes out, the ones from um, Stephen Wright and um, Rodney Dangerfield, and started putting my own jokes in there. And that was late 90s, uh, mid-90s to late 90s. And... Um, you know, um, about n- early ni- 90, about 89, Martin and Tommy Davidson went to L.A. And they went, Martin went to do a uh, class act. No, not class act. What was that the first one he did? Uh, house Party. House Party. He did House Party. And Tommy Davidson was working on Living Color, the pilot, the first episode. So I went out there and I saw Martin and all them. And they were like, yo, come on out there. Fuck D.C. Come on back out here, man. I was like, what? Come on back out there. I was like, all right, I can stay with you, Martin. He's like, no. Nah. I was like, damn, nigga, how you going to invite a nigga and not let him stay with you? <laughs> damn. Yeah, that's bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Come on out. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> come out and come out and get on these streets yourself, nigga. I was like, damn. <laughs> so so for a year, I saved, I saved all my money up. <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. But it, I get it. I get it. But so yeah. a year later, I, I came back out there and I came out there, man, with a, a car, pack of, you know, all my clothes, uh, 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 I think a VHS back in then, <laughs> a little TV and a microwave and $800 in my pocket. That's after a year of saving. I got out here and uh, I, I met some guys before I came out there. The, the, the time I was there a year earlier, I met a guy. He said, you can stay with him. And I get there and there's four dudes. Well, Became four dudes in a two bedroom apartment. I was not living my best life. Thank God Instagram wasn't out back then. I'd had a hard time showing pictures around that blow up mattress. And for six months, I did the blow up mattress. Blow up mattress is cool for two or three months. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, two, I mean, no, two or three days. I'm talking two or like vacation, like, you know, yeah. it's a company. Do six months on a blow up mattress. And I'm the nigga blowing it up every night. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, they got asthma right now. Yeah. It's fucked up. And that shit keep going down what? by the end of by the morning. Man, shit. Waking up other people oh. blowing that shit up. Okay. Well, I was like, damn. Some nights I couldn't, I didn't have an, enough lung capacity to sleep comfortably. I said, fuck it. I'll just do half, half blow up and give me one of them cushions off the couch. We'll do it like that. And my niggas came home. They had to step over across me and shit with their girls. Just give me my boy laying right there. Just give me my boy laying right there. You know how it is to lay on a fucking mattress, a grown ass man? I used to do it butt naked. Yeah. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, we didn't do that. Oh, damn. Damn. Did you do the do on it? Did you yes, do the sir. Do? Woo! You, you was hitting on that joint? <laughs> yeah, 100%. Give him a booty eight all that. Yeah. God damn, okay. That's living the life. When you, when you on the, hold on. When you stand on a blow up mattress and you can get a girl lick your ass, eat your ass, yeah. you a bad, you cold blooded. Hey, you don't know what, you don't know how their life is. You don't know their life. Well, that's true, that's true, that's true. Yeah, you down there yeah. by that bus Sometimes, depot, nigga. But you say, no, if you think my life is bad, can you imagine what a woman life Woo! is? To lick ass on a on a blow up mattress? Yeah, come on. Oh, come on now. Come on. If, come on. if pussy doing that, Woo. you know she got to be doing that. Licking ass on a mat on a blow up mattress. Yes. I thought licking ass had to be like in like in a nice a hotel. Delicacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not delicate. Oh no, no, nigga. I don't yeah. lick no ass, nigga. No, you no, don't no, do that. No. I don't lick stamps, you motherfucker. Fool. So I know I ain't licking ass. You light skin. Yeah, There's some light skin. You got me shit. fucked over, nigga. You no, definitely sir. Like, Yeah, you don't smoke. No, you, you what, nigga? Only way I would consider licking some ass if that was my wife. Hold on, hold on. I'm telling you, my wife. You one of them niggas. You, you, be, you be lying. It's her, it's her bro. birthday. Okay. And she coming out of a boiling pot of water. Okay. A goddamn lobster. She gotta be red and wrinkled. Okay. <laughs> and when she drops, I wanna hear. Ee, ah, ee, 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 ee. And okay. if, if. Okay. Her first name is Chrissy. I might fuck with it. Ah! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Chrissy no, can get eight out. Yeah. Ooh. 
Ooh, Chris, Chris, you, you, you let dude think your ass? Ooh, you better know Chrissy, dude. Ooh, Chrissy. Next topic, please. No, ain't no topic, nothing. Next topic, shit. You better know. Hell no. Nah. Topic, okay. Chris ass clean in the motherfucker today, boy. Ooh, wee. Now, I heard if, 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 if you eat my ass, they gotta eat your ass. You, you better know it. Ooh, you, you better know it. Wee, Chrissy. The smell of breath. Well, hell no. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> What that? What that tongue do? <laughs> Let me see that tongue. Smell her lips. La, 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 Don't hide it now, shit. And shit, twizzlers okay. make mouth happy. Yeah. <laughs> Hell no. Mm -mm. <laughs> if, if you let a girl lick your ass, you gotta be down for the manscape. Uh, you, you know Come what? on, son. Can I, can you can't be. What this? the fuck? Can I, can I, let me check this out. And, like I, I bust forty one on a uh, Sunday. Right? Okay. Okay. Oh, we got this. It's you. Me and you got the same birthday. May 7th. That's right. Yes. I was wondering, my, me and my homeboy was just talking about this the other day. And like he was like, you got a, you got the same birthday as somebody. And, and y'all was going crazy about it when y'all found out. Yeah. And, and, and I was like, yeah, I do remember that, but I don't know who the fuck it is. And it just hit me just fucking now. now. Now, we, that's the only thing we got in common is our birthday, because ass licking we ain't got in common. Oh, okay. So yeah. don't bring me down to that ass no yes. You gotcha. licking. Okay. And, and, and you ain't manscaping? No. Nigga, come on. Your ass rough as that damn carpet. No, you know on. what? Like, girl, I lick this goddamn carpet. Hey, hey listen. <laughs> I, I ain't, I ain't, I've Ooh. never had this much hair in my Ooh. ass until this God year. damn. The, this the, year? The, the hair just year? came this year like that. Really? Yeah. Ooh -wee. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. braid it? Hell you, no. You, you could definitely braid that shit. Motherfucker look you like You can though. definitely break this shit. I'm, I'm, I'm fixing it. Motherfucker look like I'm, I'm going to clip it tomorrow. T tomorrow? Wow. Yeah, I'm going to clip it tomorrow. For your birthday. Get ready for your birthday. Get ready for my birthday. How are you going to clip it? I'm gonna Somebody got to clip it for no, I'm gonna no, 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 go behind cool. there, get me some, get me a little, yeah, hair, yeah. little, little hair, some scissors. Uh, 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 and scissors? No, no. Get a little razor. Uh, what do you call that? One like they got manscaped. They got a little small. No, you see, uh, no, I because I, I done made a mistake and then cut some, cut some dick meat. Doing <laughs> it with my you went with the goddamn scissors. You talking about motherfucker? No, Hell with no. some clippers. With some clippers, I done cut the dick meat. No, get a soft clipper. Just use a regular razor. <laughs> just get. Just Hell no. No, Hell, listen. Ooh. Wait, well, no, just soak it up really good. Yeah, damn. You put, pull one ass cheek to the side. Yeah, I, 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 and no, 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 boo -boo. no, no, easy, easy. You know what? No, 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 no. What? You went from here to goddamn here now. You cool. What? Okay, you talk to somebody. Let's just talk. So, a razor? No, a razor on your butthole? Not, let her talk. The, not let her talk. the actual razor, the one that you use to shave your legs. No, boo boo. With. No, yeah. no. They, they got little clippers called man. Little clippers, they soft on the top, and you, and you can knock no, all that off. He's going to, he's going to, no, he's going to clip right. this shit. You have a bloody ass, homie. <laughs> no, he's not. Okay. If you soft okay. your ass, okay. it's not. Wait, buy the nigga some depends tonight, because he's going to need them. <laughs> 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 oh shit! I don't know. So Chrissy, you you you, you what? done it? Yeah, I done it. Yeah, and ah, damn. And and I didn't cut myself. Oh, oh your own? You be your own. own? Oh, oh yeah. Would you do your man's? Yeah. Hold on. So I, 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 I like Chrissy girl, now. Girl, girl, girls, girls, girls. Right, right. I'll, cut, I'll, I'll go and bend over, babe. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. yeah. You won't look at him differently. No. Uh. <sighs> I uh, want him to help me out too. Then if okay. I can see certain parts. I like, Hold on, so you, I, I, you didn't cut your man's ass out before? <laughs> I haven't. But she if would. He asks, I mm. would do it. See, I would ask. Damn. I definitely. I, I would. would de I would definitely ask. I would, I would definitely if we ever start mind. going together, I'd ask you. Uh, wow. Right. 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 Definitely. Yeah. One hundred percent. That's good to know. Yeah. I appreciate that, Chrissy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a, see you. See you need me on the show to get info. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know that, did you? No, you know, I didn't know. There that. you go. I didn't know that. I know how to pull it out of folks. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I need somebody <laughs> to pull it out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you, let's talk Def Jam, man. All right. how, how do we make it to Def Jam? A guy named Bob Sumner. I moved to California. I was being funny. I was just, like my first year in California. Bob Sumner had. Uh, look, they filmed. A lot of people don't know this. They filmed six episodes first. Managers and agents got their, their comedians to go on first. The show did so well. Just being taped, not being seen yet. So they did six shows. They felt it went well. So they went back to get six more. With Martin. Okay. So they went back and looked for, they said, okay, we want a full season, meaning 12 or 13 episodes. 
They hadn't released the sixth one. They just seen how good it went. He went back. He went looking for some more comedians. He, uh, he called a comedy club. They were talking about me. You know, yo, got to check this boy Pierre out. He's really funny. So whoop de whoop he came out and saw me. I got off stage. He said, yo, you're on Def Jam. I didn't really know what Def Jam. Remember, it hadn't aired yet. I was like, all right, cool. I'd heard the other comedians that went, Ricky, Ricky Harris, Yvette Wilson, rest in peace. A couple other comics that went and did the thing, you know, before. And Steve Harvey did the first episode. And, um, you know, I went there, and that's when I— um, and a lot of people don't know this, too. In the first, I'm going to tell you something you might not know. In the, um, the, the earlier seasons, they would take five comedians who wasn't the funniest, wasn't going to make it. So your ass was in that bitch trying to get it on, you know, on TV. And um, that's and so I went and did my thing. And that's why I was so fast talking because everybody was like, man, New York audience don't play, boy. You better come with New York audience. They don't give a fuck. So I was trying to make sure they don't boo me, you know what I'm saying, while I was doing my thing. That's why I did a show, joke about being shot at McDonald's, the hitchhiker joke that people remember so much. And... Um, and that's why Bernie Mac, when he came out, he said, I ain't afraid of you, motherfucker. I ain't, because a comic had bombed in front of him. So he it was, was talking about that. Right? No, no, it was a guy named Butch Burns from D.C., an old head. He was just older. He was too oh, old okay. for that crowd and yeah. stuff. So he didn't do well, and that's why he said that, and that's why I married together. You mm-hmm. didn't see the comic. You just heard Bernie Mac coming out saying what he said. Yeah, I heard he was crying. Who was? Uh, that comedian. Butch Burns? Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. Butch was just an older head. You know, he probably was about, at the time, probably 40 and them kids, you know, everybody was like 18, 19, 21, 22. So, and he was a conservative. You know, he wasn't no hip dude, you know. So, but nah, nah, he wasn't crying. Hell no. No, nah, I didn't see him cry. I wasn't there for the taping, but when I heard, I didn't see him cry. Or, I mean, I can't imagine him crying. You know what I'm saying? He might have cried years later that he was <laughs> shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like the, not the butt of jokes, but whatever. He's an old head. I talked to him recently, man. I'm so happy he's still around. This is 1990s. Think about that, man. Yeah, yeah. He's still, uh, you know, still doing his thing. Right now. Yeah, just a more mature crowd. You know, he's probably 65 now. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, because comedy don't got no age. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he does different sh- corporate shows and stuff like that, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah, so he's still doing So that's how it was. And I asked, and I'm going to say this. I'm telling you, so... You Martin. had a great set, man. I appreciate it. That that, that sexy aroused joke. What you, what you say, what you oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was the second one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was. Second, oh, that was oh you oh you did it twice. Nigga, who, who you you know who you got on the show? Oh, did you the research? Oh yeah. Did you 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 different outfit? Yeah. You different outfit, Pierre? Yeah, come on now. Come on. God damn, bro. Pissy, he's sleeping. I am. Okay. Who, who was who was hosting the second time you were on there? Oh, um, that's when they remember they went to like four hosts. Yeah, yeah. It was Joe Toy. Joe Toy, um, Chris Rock, Jimmy Fox. No, no, no. That, that was an all star. Okay. So what it was was uh, Martin did two seasons. Then Joe Torrey did a season. Then they did three people Ricky Harris, Joe Torrey, Adele Givens, and I think maybe someone else. I forgot who else. They, then they did it. Then the next year they brought the all stars with all the different comics, did a different one, you know, all star. I was in the one that season with the four people, and then Joe Torrey did mine. And I remember Martin told me this, man. <laughs> So he said, what do you want me to say about you? And at the time, I forgot how old I was. I was young, 21, 22, whatever age I was. And I said, and I was headlining comedy clubs. And I said, you tell him that I'm the youngest headlining comic, which I was at the time, because he's a little older, like two years older than me. He told me, nah, I ain't going to say that. I said, God damn, that's when you get, yo, next comedian from D.C. Man, get the fuck out of here. I, I told you what I wanted you to say, nigga. And you said, no, everyone else you tap dance for, you, the nigga from Brooklyn, he's the funniest nigga in Brooklyn. But for me, he didn't want to say it. Just want to say, yo, this comedian from Def, from DC. It's not what I asked you to say, nigga. You asked me what you want me to say, and I told you what I wanted you to say, and you told me you ain't gonna say it. You said, no, I ain't gonna say that. Then I came back when when Joe Torrey was hosting. I rocked that motherfucker so hard I threw the mic down and walked off. And Joe Torrey told me, I ain't picking it up. I said, I ain't picking it up even, nigga. Leave it out there. Hey, je- jealousy. <laughs> Damn. Jealousy. Did, did you did you get any flack from that, or was it did, did you was it a, a, it was edited right so you was able to capitalize off the moment? Oh yeah, oh yeah. They, 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 they didn't show that part and all that. You know, it's just what it is. It's the business, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I love this business. Yeah. And I don't like everything about it. But I love this yeah, business. Yeah, it's rough. You know what I'm saying? It's rough. People have no idea what goes behind the no, scenes. No, they don't. And sometimes when you speak on it, you know, people feel like, oh, you hating, you better. Yeah, I'm not you bitter. Better. Yeah, I yeah. got a beautiful life. I yeah. live a beautiful life. Yeah. I'm just telling y'all what happened. Now, if yeah. you don't want to hear what happened, then go go watch some another show. Go watch Joe, Joe Osteen. He'll tell you what you yeah. need to hear. 
But I'm going to keep it 1,000. What happened was happened. I'm going to tell you. Now, for years, I didn't mention shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I was worried about the bigger picture. Somebody might do this. I don't give two fucks, nigga. I run my own shit now. Yeah, you, you don't give a fuck, me. bro. You... I, don't give, I make my own movies, man. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. make my own podcasts. I make my own, own shit. I don't give a fuck. Now, I don't mean I'm going to be an asshole to people. It's just I'm going to now speak my mind and say what it was. You, you, gonna, you, you, gonna, you, don't, you don't mind uh, throwing some niggas under the bus. No, not under the bus. No, no. I'm just, I, I don't have a problem with showing people what happened or yeah. talking about what happened. It ain't about throwing nobody under the bus. No, anybody's going, no, no. And I'll tell you who showed me love, who did well for me. You know, I got, I love, people come out, I've had 20 people, no, no, put it in for me, over about 100 people on my podcast who came to my, you, you didn't have to come on my show. Yes, I did. Okay, well, maybe I needed you did, that shit. I didn't feel that. that uh, I, need, <laughs> I needed you it. Okay, I needed it. it. I, I left out of there energized. I, once again, I just want to say thank you for letting me come on again. Well, I was a blessing. I appreciate you coming, man. Yeah. And I've, yeah, had, yeah. And I've had some huge stars. On my, on my show, some huge stars. So uh, it's love, but you know, if you ask me a question, okay, you want me to tap dance for you? Dig, dig. Know what you need? Is that to make you feel better? Nah, no, no, no. Everything that you're saying, it make, it make a lot more sense now. And you have answered like maybe five questions with that statement. Just All right. Now. Yeah, yeah, it is. Then. When, you, when yeah. you just said that. There's a reason why you ain't still on This Is 50, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. we all have reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you want to talk about it, you talk about it. I mean, you wrong for talking about it. Why he going to bring that up? Why? Motherfucker, you asked. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes politics of the shit just be. It is. So. I don't. But that's that's when you still feel like you're under the the the, the hand of politics. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, let, let's talk how to be a player. Okay. And um, you know, like, uh, uh, how did you get that? How did you get the role in How to Be a Player? Were you and Bill Bellamy already friends from the Def Jam situation? We were associates. You know what I'm saying? We were cool. You know, but we didn't hang and call each other. You call that? You would call that a friend. We wasn't that. We were cool. I did a movie called Baps with Halle Berry, and the producers of that show, you know, my movie thought I did well. That was Def Jam too. No, no, they were produ just the producers. White, you know, Steph Jam, Island Pictures, you know, a lot of people are involved. That's right, right. So the producers of BAPS said, hey, come and read for this movie. We got another movie shooting. I came in, and uh, my girl, shout out to my girl, uh, Nikki Gilbert from Brownstone. She helped me read because she went to audition for it too. So I went to her house, and we read over the lines the night before. I came in, I aced it, and when I was leaving, at least Neil had just did, was doing her part. You know, if, I hope y'all know at least Neil. Yes, definitely. She, right, she was walking out the building, and I had killed my audition. They said, hold up. And they called her to come back because, you know, see how our chemistry was. They had liked her. And uh, we did it, you know, and next thing you know, we were you know, coupled up in How to Be a Player. Mm. Mm. I love Elisa Neal. Oh, yeah, Elisa Neal. She's a heck of an actress. Yeah. Hell she, of an actress. Yes, you know? yes. Y'all yeah, still cool today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've, I've emailed her and texted her, you know what I'm saying? I give her props for her stuff. Um, she really is a good actress, man. Remember, she's Rosewood. She's a lot of good shit. Yeah, you know? Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, don't forget her. Yeah, she's she just a working. sexy motherfucker yeah, yeah. and a dope actress of Money Talks. Yeah, I'm trying all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hugh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. She definitely, she definitely one of the ones I think just needs to, you know, keep working and they need to give her more work. Word, word. Did y'all so did y'all do like a how to be a player comedy tour after that? No. No, no, no. Everybody that went, didn't no, happen. No, no. Mm -mm. So no AJ Johnson, no, no Bill Bellamy, no, no Pierre comedy yeah, tour. Yeah, no, nah, none of that. None of that. What happened when you have agents and managers, if they don't feel this, you know, conducive for their client or whatever, to, you know, they just it's not. The fans can want it all day long, but people don't want to put it together. They just want to put it together. You know, there's egos involved, there's personalities involved. You know, it's just a lot of a lot of stuff goes behind the scenes. You know, you know, we got a thing called favorite nations a lot of time. And favorite nations means everyone gets paid the same. But then some people say, man, I want fifty thousand, and the rest of y'all gonna have two thousand. Like what? I'm not saying that's what happened. But I'm saying how tours go sometimes, and that's why they break up. They don't really work out. Like, nah, man, I'm not about to, I'm not about to do a tour for two thousand. You get fifty, and we damn near the same. You know what I'm saying? But some people feel, you know, look at what's that group called? Uh, TCG. Yeah, yeah, them motherfuckers broke up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. of money issues and shit, man. This, they you know, trying to get back together now. Uh, Ty Tyrese trying to. He he, yeah. he he had went back to Atlantic, and yeah, he trying to put yeah, it back yeah. together now. The pockets start changing. When the market changing. changing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you yeah. like, okay, yeah. you maybe I fucked up on that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right, right. It happened like that. So, yeah. No. So, but I would have loved to have done it. You know, I, I enjoy Bill Bellamy. I enjoy AJ. Me and AJ, we've had so much fun together. 
so much fun together. Um, but that'd been a cool tour, yeah. Yeah. Word, yeah. word, word, word. So you, you and AJ, you, was y'all really uh, tight, did it? Real tight. Real tight. Mm. That was my, yeah, yeah. You a little crazy. He a hood nigga, for real. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I went and hung out with him. He was, yeah, he, he was, yeah. But we, we did a lot of shows together, me and AJ, man. Mm. Um, I wish he wouldn't have passed, you know, I would love to get him on a podcast and sat down and talk to him. Even uh, Natalie Drussell, I would have loved to get her, rest in peace. We were man, I used to be so in love with her. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't know she was person. married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A good person. We were about to do BAPS the tour right before the pandemic. Really? Yeah, me, her, AJ, and some other people, they were putting in, you know, the parts. And it was really a good play. And I've done a lot of those black plays. I've done these six, seven black plays. This one was really a good one. You know, I've done some good ones, but this one was a good one. I, I know bad ones and good ones. And um, we went to, right, we were right about to start when the pandemic hit. Then we had to take the hiatus, you know, we couldn't do it. And she passed in December. So, like, around March, we were about to start. In December, she passed. And, um, you know... I don't. I, I don't want to do it without. I wouldn't want to be the only person from, <laughs> you know, from Babs to do that play. So, God bless them. I hope they, you know, get. You know, the script was was dope. So if you hear about it, go out and see it. Hey, so you know, we talking Babs. I know you get asked this shit all, all the time. The Ask God me again. Wrong with that. Damn time. Yeah, you know the answer. Yes, you. Ask it. Holly Berry. Beautiful. Like, but, but she's not Holly Berry yet, like, then, when you're doing bath. Yet. I, I ain't trying to be fucked up, but I don't know what you was looking at. No, no, but she's, no, she, find, she was finding okay. a motherfucker. All right, then. <laughs> yeah, she's finding, a, but you you know, it's some, it's a, I don't know what make people that nigga. Right. But it was something about that movie mm -hmm. where it, this wasn't the one that made her that yet. Okay. Where people were saying, she, yo, she was that nigga. Okay. He, but, of course, she still looked the same right. the next time when, when, they, when they said it, she right. was that nigga. Right. When, and when you go back there and you look at that, you like, well, that's my nigga Pierre over there tongue kissing Holly Berry. But see, I'm like this. What do you like? Once you're a queen, it don't matter what level of queen you are. Mm. Bringing back this lovely young lady here. To kiss her today. I knew you was going to do that. To kiss her today, and she's. She going to kiss you just because <laughs> you, you did. You kiss Halle Berry, too. <laughs> that, okay, well, good. But to kiss her today, <laughs> and she's on the end of the couch, and then tomorrow, I mean, next year, she becomes the f biggest whatever, celebrity, whatever she wants. That's what she's going to do, too. It's the same lips, nigga. It ain't no difference, motherfucker. Yeah. I won't be like, oh, my God. I kiss her now. She in a movie with Eddie Murphy. That's never now. It's the same lips. Yeah. Oh, Chrissy going to change. Huh? She going to definitely change on your ass. Yeah. Chrissy going to change? She that, that, she that uh, type of Them lips of ain't going to change. Like yeah. That. But no, so so kissing Halle Berry, well, yeah, it was it was great. In fact, I'm gonna tell you another little nugget. I ain't really told nobody. Yes, please. Damn. And that is um, the scene was we're dancing. I, I come to see her, you know, when she's in a ballroom Did you by grab herself. Booty? Right, huh? You grabbed the booty. No, no, no. And so they supposed to show in the script. They supposed to old man. I guess he's at the hospital. Mm -hmm. And they come back, yeah. and me and her are starting to. Dance, I guess, and they cut back to him in the hospital, right. and then they cut back to us kissing, and then someone comes in and interrupts the kiss. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, Robert Townsend, shout out to Robert Townsend, he, he directed the movie. He's we were amazing. running out of time, and so he was like, yo, cut the, don't forget, don't, we ain't gonna do the kiss part, just, just do the dancing. Nigga, please. <laughs> Got me fucked up. Got me fucked way up, okay? <laughs> so <laughs> when we was dancing, that's why I, and if we said, that's why I grabbed her head, you see me grab her head and pull her to me. Now, at the point, I'm a DC dude, I'm, I'm going in. I didn't know if she's gonna be like, hold on, nigga, we said we ain't gonna kiss. Oh, I don't know, man. but we're gonna try it. And she let me kiss her, and that's the only kiss we did in the whole movie was that one kiss. See, I ain't know nobody that. Wasn't no whole bunch of kissing. It was one and done. Oh, okay. Our lips you made still. it. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> her lips felt like everybody. It, it, it felt the same. People be always saying how her lips feel. Like, I mean, like Shakita's in the hood lips. It ain't chapped and shit, okay? It lips, was regular. Lips, motherfucker, that's ain't chapped and shit and fucked no. up. Hey, oh, yeah, because no. I, I, I ain't Lips are lips, nigga. You got the I, same I was... lips as Denzel Washington. Do you know that? <laughs> you just ain't Denzel Washington. You got the same lips. I got the same lips as Denzel. I've seen Denzel. Oh, don't tell this nigga. Yes, you got that Denzel lips. You got, you got Denzel <laughs> lips. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, he don't do that now. That's, that's, that's Denzel. Okay, that's that Denzel Smith right there, nigga. Get, you know, just act normal. Relax. You I'm trying. Get, I'm there trying. you go. I'm trying to get it together, man. Okay. I'm trying to get it back together, bro. I'm telling you, man. I'm trying to get it back together. You got me, y'all, shy shit. Yeah, right you, got, 
You got Denzel lips, that's all. So when a girl kiss you, say, you kissing Denzel lips. Same lips as lips. Kissing uh. fucked up lips. But you had no one looking lips. <laughs> yeah. The word, man. Yeah, that's all. That's what's up, man. I, I, I appreciate you going putting that to bed for me, man. Oh, okay. Because I've been wanting to ask you to ask you that forever. Mm. And uh, yeah, yeah, that that was. Definitely. I appreciate. Shout out to Holly for letting me kiss her, and we, you know, and shout out for for Robert Townsend not stopping the tape and shit. And it became because you know what, I had a good time in the movie, but I'm gonna keep it one thousand for the street dudes and all that. If I hadn't kissed her, nigga, I'd just been in the movie with her. That kiss took it to another level. Yeah. Mm. Don't nobody ask me how was it acting with her, and no, nigga, how was it kissing her? So you eliminate that one moment, like you know, I saw you in that movie, Baps. Once yeah. you kiss her, it's totally different. Hey, so l- let, let's go back a little bit. Let, mm-hmm. Let's go back to how, how to be a player okay. with, with, uh, with Nadine. I mean, uh, at least Neil. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. Oof. What, what, like, yo, what, Oof. what was that like? Yeah. Come on, man. Look at her, man. You saw the Hey, vision, bro. Man. Come on. L- l- once again. She's a top actress. She's very good at uh, actress, ad-libbing and all that. Shout out, my, shout out to my man, the director, Lionel C. Martin. He directed that. Uh, and he let me ad-lib. And what I realized then, when he let me ad-lib some stuff, and then when it came out, people liked the stuff I ad-libbed. I said, you know what? I got it. That's when I realized I had it because y'all liked the shit that I came up with my damn stuff. I was supposed to come downstairs with just some drawers on at the door. I said, nah, son, that ain't going to be funny. Give me the cowboy boots yeah, and the hat and the fucking whip frame. <laughs> then I hit the door. It's a whole different thing. He said, go on, do it, man. You know, that gynecology chair, yeah. I'm just going to open the door and say, yo, come on out. And I said, let me get in there and get that chair. I got a little moves <laughs> I'm thinking about. He let me do that. So shout out to Lionel. He let me do some extra that little things and stuff. So yeah, a little right. extra stuff. Yeah, all that. Man. Man, she she's still fine, what? bro. I see, I follow her IG. Man, I, I seen her at uh at a goddamn uh, what's, what's my man, Chris Spencer. Um his yeah. um, Chocolate Sundays. I, he was he was doing a mock uh shoot for his comedy special that oh. he did for Netflix. Okay. And she was there. I was like, God damn, Elisa, nice. God damn. Oh, yeah, still fine. Still. You know what oh. I'm saying? They say black don't crack. With the, bo- with the booty crack, too. Nigga. Oh, damn. With the- Back on this booty shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was the fuck up. That nigga like that girl. He like ice spice. He munchy, munchy, motherfucker. Nigga. <laughs> yeah, I'm a munch. Yeah, you're a munch, nigga. I'm a munch. <laughs> Bruh. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, God. So... You know, you you hooked up with comedy hype. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Let me. Let me I'm gonna be skipping on when I met you. You know, on on Dwayne Boyd's movie. Oh yeah. For yeah ten four minutes, minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Yes. Yeah. Shout four out to minutes. Dwayne Boyd. I love Dwayne Dwayne Boyd. Man, do you know yeah. how big of a fan Dwayne was? To, to uh, of yours yeah. and. To, to have you in the movie, you you made his life. Uh, yeah, yeah. I put him in my movie. One of my movies is coming out soon. Yeah, he killed it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And hey, once again, Dwayne Boyd is one of the most, the, the hottest acting coaches in mm-hmm. Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Got one of the hottest mm-hmm. acting classes. Pomega Actor Studio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yes. good dude. Yeah, good dude. I always, Great guy. People, people ask me, what's the acting class to come do in Atlanta? I always mention his. Yes. Yeah, and he let me sit in a couple of times and give notes to the actors. I really appreciate that. He's like, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you know, the, the, if you need, uh, you know, headshots, uh, you know, um, if you need to, to send in tapes and mm-hmm. what, what, what do they call it, send the tapes? When you send the tape yeah. in? Uh, yeah, yeah, like, like the, for auditions. Yeah, yeah, for auditions and stuff. Yeah, yeah I yeah. forgot. Uh, what's the, man, what is Damn, that? I forget what that is. Yeah. Obviously, you don't do it that much either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you see how you just turned that shit on yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, see said, you, yeah, yeah. Right I said we. I didn't say the word we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's called yeah, a pronoun. Motherfucker. It's called a pronoun. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, he, uh, he, DC Young Fly, he said he do a, he, uh, he go there too still to this day. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I went mm-hmm. a couple times, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He still yeah. go there. Too. So what about, what are we going back Four to? minutes, yeah. Oh, four minutes, that's right, four minutes. Yes, work, working on that film, man, how was it for you? Um... To be honest, it was a, it was a small little movie, real quick. It was in and out. So oh, you went and took the money and then got on. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I didn't get. I ain't want no money. I, I showed love. It's all good. He came and did my movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, he came, yeah, he came and did my movie. Dig. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. That's so what's up, man. I got a movie called Slice. It's a trilogy. Slice one, two, and three. And he played uh, a couple. Of t- he played in it twice. Part one and part two. They're about to come out now to Tubi. And I like him coming out to Tubi because Tubi, I heard, got some bullshit on it, and mine ain't bullshit. So hopefully, people gravitate to my good shit. You know what I'm saying? I just need eyeballs. Damn how, you know what I'm saying? I don't care if it's a platform. People say, oh, nigga, that's a bullshit movie. Those bullshit over there, mine's over here. 
Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? I need y'all to see it. That's all. Hey, hey Pia, ain't nobody shooting their own movies, bro. The, I know, the, I the niggas can say yeah. what the fuck they want to say oh, God, mm-hmm. yeah. and whatnot. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, yeah, hey, nigga, that. you go do it. And no. pe- yeah, and, and shout out to everybody else that is doing the same thing and uh, you know taking their destiny mm-hmm. into their own hands mm-hmm. and putting their stuff up on Tubi and everything too. Right. Man, shout out to you. Hey, yeah. man, uh, how many how many movies are you in right now? Like that you produce yourself. Well, I produced one back in the like like early two thousands called For the Love of Money. I took a lot of comedians. I from remember that. that. You remember that? Yeah. That was, and I didn't realize how inspirational it was to a lot of comedians. They came to me who makes movies like. Oh, you, you, you I saw that. Nigga. You started like, a boom. Yeah. Wow. I had Atheon Crockett in it. My big my man, Rock, rest in peace, Ralphie May, the big white comic and stuff. Yeah. Like, Honest John. I had a whole bunch of Joey Wells, one of the Pla- Plastic Cup Boys. See, I was around comedians, and I'm gonna be honest. The inspiration came. From Robert Townsend, Hollywood Shuffle. You know, yep. I saw him doing. It. I said, "Man, what?" And so I, I'm, you know, I'm good with writing stuff. So I wrote a movie, and I just used a lot of my friends who were funny comedians who just needed something to shine on, do something. I got them together, and they killed, man. People, I got so many comedians in it. They killed that movie, and, and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna re-release that on. Uh, I'm gonna release that on other social media platforms because people have been asking me, "Yo, where?" Because you can't really find a DVD or, or VHS no more of mm-hmm. that. So I'm gonna put it back out called For the Love of Money, mm-hmm. and then um, I came to Atlanta. And I got tired of Hollywood, you know, Hollywood system and all that. And I was like, you know what, enough of that. So in early, I think it was uh, 2000, what year did I come out here? 2008, let's say eight, I came out here. Because, you know, it, became the, it was coming, becoming the black Hollywood. So I said, you know what, I'm going to come and take, you know, I'm going to play that system in L.A. And L.A. is such a totally different system of agents and managers and this and that. And out here, it was like wild, wild west. You just had a camera and some people to come. We ready to film. Y'all was hungry yeah. and ready to help, and everybody wanted, wanted to work. And um, I started, uh, uh, what do you call that thing? You remember my uh, web series, Dating Pierre? Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. I did seven episodes of the wildest stuff I could think of. And I love when I'm directing and something, writing something, because I get to do what I want to. Ain't no, no, nah, don't do that. Let's not say that. Let, damn that. We're going to do it and going to see what it's going to be. And it was about me dating different types of women out here in L.A. I mean, in Atlanta. Like, everyone from hood rats to uh, nerdy oh, girls to, like, you church girls. You had all kind of bitches. Oh, well, well, damn. Okay. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> you want to say that then. Are we, are we, are we going to cut that out? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I get to stay. Okay, nigga. But um, I had a lot of fine actors and actresses okay, in, my, in my production. Shout out to Skull Bubble. Remember Skull Bubble? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, shout out RS, R. R-, R- R.I.P. You, R- you got the RSVPs? No, nah, nah, he ain't coming back. <laughs> yeah, he ain't definitely going to yeah, be yeah, there. Yeah, he ain't coming to that show. He ain't going to be there. Shout out to my school. He was one of, one of the cool guys. Mm-hmm. So I did that. Then after that, I wrote um, Slice. It's a horror comedy. It's basically what black people would do in a horror movie. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And the cool thing about mine is you don't, most movies you know who the killer is. You know who Jason is. You mm-hmm. know who Freddy Krueger is already. But mine is he's, he's a, he or she is a character in the movie. Because he wears a gas mask, a, a hoodie, a, a gel stripe outfit, gloves, and a machete. So you can't tell who the person is underneath there. And the cool thing was I let anybody wear that damn outfit during the movie. So the shape of that nigga body was moving all kind of oh. tall. Me, you don't know who the hell. But they, they are one of the characters in the movie. Mm. And at the end, we pull off the mask like Scooby-Doo. Like, oh, shit, so-and-so. And then we do flashbacks of stuff you should have paid attention to in the movie. Mm. Kind of like uh, Murder, She Wrote and shit like that. Uh, 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 You know, old, uh, yeah, yeah, all that kind of like, go back and be like, oh, he turned the door with his red herring. There it is. There it is. (laughs) So each movie is like that. You got to guess. And I got new characters. Of course, we kill off some characters in part one, but whoever's left over comes to part two with some new ones. And I got some comedians in it that killed it. When I say killed it, killed it, man. So, um... I'm so proud of them, man. And then I, you know, so that, yeah. So so get ready for that on Tubi or whatever your uh, streaming platform, Slice 1 and 2 and 3. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so proud to call you, man, one of my best good friends. I got one more salacious. This, I got one salacious. On, one it. salacious question. Oh, shit, here we go. The vicious lies, mm-hmm. nasty rumors. Come on. We could clear it up if, 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 if it's true. I know, I know where you're going with it. Really. Uh, th- th- I, I don't have much bullshit around me. Okay. Very fruit. Oh, what you think I might ask you? I know what it's going to start with, yeah. What you think? What Come you think? on. No, I, I'll tell you what. Ask me, I'm going to tell you that's what it was. If it wasn't, I'll be honest with you. Okay. And tell her. Yeah, tell her. Tell her. Okay. <laughs> I ain't got much that fucks. I don't do no fuckery, so All right. it's going to be small. Say it, nigga, it's your Legend show. Legend has it. Okay. 
that you had told Gary Owens a wife that he was cheating on her. Mm-hmm. That's what he. That's what he had told you. I don't have much fuckery, bro. What he I, told you that shit to Chrissy. I don't have much fuckery. Chrissy, he told you that. You said Gary Owens. <laughs> he said it. I told you because I know what it is, but I, I live a clean slate of life. He said it. Motherfucker, that's why he looked at it. Yeah. He said it. That's what he told me. I know. You can't pick nothing else I do. I don't do fuckery shit at all. I don't fuck no, I ain't no fuck boy. I don't fuck no one over. None of that. That's why you don't hear that about me. That's why when that story came out, it was fuckery. I don't do that. So the, basically the thing was, she used to work at a comedy club, you know, Fat Tuesday and book comics. Yeah. So we changed numbers there, but she, she had a lot of people's numbers. And we talked. Me and her talked. You know, a normal, but, but when she started liking me, not liking me like that, but like saying, you cool as fuck. You know, you come into clubs now, you don't say no, I thought you and were you arrogant. you weren't trying to hit it. No, sir, brother. Now, why do I, do you want me to start fuck around now? All the things I've been telling you have been the truth. Don't you think so far this interview has been 100? I think it has. You got to cut shit out, nigga. That's how 100 I am, motherfucker. So <laughs> yeah, let's be real. Yeah, yeah. So one more time. So now, so now I'm going to do some fuckery? No, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, so let's go yeah. with everything I say right, is right. correct and above water. 100%. Yeah. There we go. Right. Don't look at me sideways now. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You got this motherfucker make this from an hour show to a 30 minute show, nigga. <laughs> yeah. Okay, because my shit too real. <laughs> right. Oh, all right. Ah. Makes it. Makes it. Too much. So, yes, yeah, so she was working at a comedy club, you know, and we shared a number. And she's like, Man, you're really cool. So we talked about the business. So we talked on the phone about the business back and forth sometimes when she called me to book me for the room. Okay? So, out of, you know, whatever. I moved away from LA. One day I heard that he had a problem with me. And I was like, all right, whatever. Fuck it. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know why, but whatever. So I kind of let it go. You know how people, you may hear somebody say something about you, whatever. But I'm going to confront you when I see you, but I'm not going to chase you. You know what I'm saying? We'll talk about it when I see you. That's the type of thing. I don't walk around past two dudes that don't like each other. I'm more mm-hmm. like, yo, let me holler you for a second. What did you say? I have no problem. Now, I'm not trying to sound bold here, but you're not about to whoop my ass. If you would, you want to take an ass whooping with you. I'm not afraid of nobody. So I don't have a problem with coming to you and saying, let's talk, bro, like two men. I don't do that bitch shit. Like, I, ain't saying, walk around anymore. I don't play them games. If we had a problem, let's work it out. Once I've asked you and we talked as a man, if you do that bitch shit behind my back, then you the bitch. Because mm. I came to you already and I talked to you. Mm. Now, I know I'm light-skinned and handsome, but don't think I'm a bitch nigga. Okay? I know somebody got to be dark with, with you know, damn near missing the eye, cutting them and fucking missing some teeth. Then niggas be like, you a tough motherfucker. No, sir. Not saying you're not mm. tough, but you get what I'm saying. <laughs> no, no, no. You good. You good. You a real cat. That's why I'm here. I don't do everybody's <laughs> podcast. Okay? You can't count on your fingers how many podcasts I've been on with one hand. All right. So back to the story real quick at hand. So I heard he, was, you know, he didn't like me, whatever. So finally got, it got out of hand, and I kept hearing stuff. So then I went and I confronted I tried to confront him one day up here, and, and, and he had somebody throw me out the fucking venue and shit, asked me to get the fuck out of the venue. I was like, wow, his, his, his manager, whoever it was, with it. I was looking at him from behind the stage. He was doing a big show. So the next day I was talking to somebody, and I said, so I said, well, what happened? Someone was there. I said, that nigga trying to, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I said, because, I, because someone told me it was because I said that he was doing the same material over and over again. I was like, well, I don't understand. That's why he was probably mad at me. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't know what the real reason was. I was like, whatever. So I said, uh, after I told my friend who's asked why I, you know, why I get kicked out, I told him that. He said, that's not what he said. I said, that's not what he said. What did he say? He said, the reason he had you kicked out because you told his wife that he'd be fucking around the road. I said, What? First of all, I'm too G of that shit, nigga. I didn't live a great life when I was married, so I'm not gonna bring the wives down. I don't play. The, I don't care if you fuck yourself, nigga. I don't fuck around, nigga. I don't <laughs> care. It's nothing to do with me. Mm. I would never do that because I know if I told his wife that, say if I would do something like that, and they get back together, then what did I just do? I don't told his wife some shit, and then she's still married to the nigga. Then he pissed off, and she pissed off. Mm. I don't need that part. I don't need that. I'm not gonna do that. So I don't get down like that. So I said, what? Now I'm hearing that he's telling people that, and I stand on my square. You know what I'm saying? As a man, I don't do that. So if niggas telling you you want some bitch shit, then you want to really rectify it then. Then I'm really looking for him. So I finally caught up with the nigga years later. Some other stuff happened. I ain't going to get into that, but, uh, you know, to show how real I was with the nigga, he got it. So I met him at a club, my son at a club, and we sat down and talked about it. And I said, dude, let me holler at you. What the fuck is you talking about? And he explained to me. He said, man, you know, my wife came and said that, you know, she knew some, some detail of a situation, he said, and she knew too many details. And he's like, how do you know these details? And she said, he said, tell me. She wouldn't tell him for like a week. He said, man, tell me what the fuck. Who told you? This came out. Pierre told me. 
Huh? What, what under what bus, bitch? You throw me under the bus, bitch? Are you crazy? <laughs> what we not gonna do is that, bitch. Hell no, like, I ain't never tell you that. I never told her that, ever. Ever. And so, he was like, all right, all right, man. I said, okay, bro. I said, are we good? We two men sitting right here. Are we good, nigga? I'm right here with you. If it's a problem, let's talk about it. If it's not, we good. He said, we good. I said, all right. That was years ago. I heard he still has a little feeling about certain things. I guess we not good. I have no beef with that man. But I told him what I said. Now him and his wife ain't together. Maybe you may understand. Maybe, you know, he might not be telling the truth all the time. But this situation here, she might, I'm quite sure she, she did not tell the truth. You know what I'm saying? So. And it's funny because people who know me, I tour with, like, Pete, that ain't you, nigga. And they know it near you. Ain't nothing you would do. So here it is. It's all good. I ain't mad about it, brother. Pierre, you gonna have to beat her ass. No, no, I ain't oh doing God. that. No, 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 no. no that's the only way God. you gonna have to. That's the only name, way. Man. You got to clear your name and beat her motherfucking ass. Uh, Do she real? still work in that club? No, hell no, hell no. I'm gonna tell you something. <laughs> now this is what this is. This is where the ass women should come. But you know what? You know we black folks, so we gonna love this. God got me on this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I ain't got to be nobody's ass. Okay, I ain't got. He gonna take care of this. He write. He write this. So look where I'm at now. Okay, I'm on the new Jack Thriller City podcast. Mike. Now, you hear that, Mike? You hear that, Mike? Now, Mike. now what I will say. This gets my black folks pissed off. And I'm gonna keep it a thousand. I I went from working theaters to working comedy clubs and just bullshit rooms. I don't know, whatever. I just didn't know. Maybe I fell off. Years later, this is in, before we before we had these before we had to sit down. Yeah, before we had to sit down. Now this is about a ten year gap. I mean, this is ten years of this shit happening. I didn't have no idea why it was, the situation was like that. A promoter called me and said, "I'm trying to get you on a show with Bruce Bruce, but the agency said somebody said you can't work with Bruce Bruce." I said, "What?" And Bruce like this, we cool, what are you talking about? I call Bruce right up, because I tell you, I come to the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't run from the problem. Mm -hmm. If it's a problem, I go right to you, what's up? So I call him up, I said, Bruce, what's up, man? You, I, we can't do a show together? Nah, what are you like? Yeah, you my dog. What you? I said, well, they saying, the promoter saying, I can't work with you. Nah, you working with me. I said, who's your agent? He told me. Someone else had that same agent. Let me make a phone call. I went off. To the head, I went to the head, not the, you know, agent, agencies have other little agents I need to. I went to the head agent. I said, nigga, no, 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 no. You trying to get me on a show with my man Bruce Bruce? I found out the agent underneath that told whoever promoter, Pierre can't work with none of our clients. Can't work with Show Underwood, can't work with Bruce Bruce, Arnez J, D.L. Hughley. Hold up. Because this white boy got a problem with me. I can't work with nobody. So can you imagine if you're a promoter, you call up and say, I want DL, I want uh, Bill Bellamy and Pierre. No, nah, we don't. Uh, Pierre can't work with none of our clients. What? I mean, years of that shit, I was getting, I, when I was doing a little small room, I, I wasn't doing no theaters no more. That's what we're doing, the nigga? Because this mother got a problem with me? You tell me, I can't work with nobody? I can understand me and him not working together. All right. I'm fine with that. But the rest of them, so his agent called and whenever you call, that, now you as a promoter, you don't have my information. You're like, all right, well, give me someone else and shit. How many times that could have went down? So check this out. So one day, I'm out of, out of the blue, I'm in Atlanta. I get a text. I get a call from that agent. I said, who? I thought somebody was playing with me because I knew the agent. I said, man, whatever. Motherfucker, click, hung up on the motherfucker. Fuck you. I don't want my friends will fuck with me. I get a text. It's called a V card where they put all your information on it and shit like that. And so now it's really mean. And I said, why the fuck would you be calling me? When you just shitted on me for years with this, you know, I'm saying. So he said, well, next time you're in L.A., let me, uh, let me, uh, let me, let me go, come, come to my agency. I want to talk to you. And I happened to be coming to L.A. like a week later. So I went to L.A. and I had a meeting with him. I'll tell you how G I am. I sit down with him. It's a true story. I sit down with the agent. Hi, I'm going to talk to you about some stuff, man. I said, all right, well, like, like, what you want from me? Like, I'm wondering what it is. He says, uh, we don't have Gary anymore. So I said, fuck Gary. And fuck his wife with them fake titties. I hope she gets cancer in them. Damn. I said, nah, bro, you can't say that. What you're not going to do is diss him now because you don't have him. Mm 
I told the, I told the white man just like that. I said, I don't play. <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I, I said, yeah, we don't do that, bro. We're not going to diss Gary because you don't got Gary. And he was like, no, nah, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we went and we, you know, he, he said, I'm going to give you all the work. I, I lost you. He didn't give me none of the work. But you know what? God got me. I'm okay with that. I'm okay. You did what you did for years. Mm. The cream rises to the crop. I'm a bad motherfucker on that stage. I'm funny. I write. I direct. I produce. I do my own thing. I am blessed. I'm dead ass. I'm blessed. Sure, I should have had some more money or something's going to change. But you know what? This is the path God had me on. I'm okay with it. That's why I tell you I'm not worried about anybody in this business. If you want to blackball me, stab me in the back, do what you got to do. I'm not stopping. You know what I'm saying? I'm not stopping. That's it. I'm not stopping. So deal with me or get the fuck out of my way. Because I'm not stopping. Unless the good Lord take me up out of here. But you're not going to stop me by being mad at me and this and that. I'm going to make sure he don't work there. No. And first, first of all, it's a small group that may not like me. Five percent. Mm -hmm. I got 95 percent people who call me. Names that you know. Yo, P, I got love for you, bro. Look, bro, if you need anything, let me know. What you need? What you need? This, that, or the other. I got it all day long. Small group. Might talk shit. You don't see me hanging with them. I don't do the phony. <laughs> it's okay if you do it. If somebody does that's what you need to do. I am at a point where I don't need to do that no more. I go in the room. If I like it, we talk. If we don't like each other, we don't, you know, whatever. If you don't like me, it's okay. What do you want me to do? I don't like He's too arrogant. He think he all that. Okay. What, why should I not think I'm the shit? Who, what is wrong with y'all? Whoever it is. I don't play fake humble. I'm just doing the best that I can. I hope y'all like me. Man, fuck that. I'm the shit. If you don't like that I'm the shit, it's okay. I'm not going to let you tell me I'm not the shit. I might be the shit to you, but I'm always going to be the shit to me. That's all I'm going to That's what's gotten me through this. When people say, no, you ain't right for the part. I don't say, okay, let me get a construction job. Let me work at Walmart. No. This is what all I'm oh, The grave will take me in this right here. The grave will take me in this. Not got all the side businesses. I'm just about to open up a day placement for adults. We need that side money, you know. So when you see the, you know, we go from the Mercedes to the Bentley, you understand. Side hustle money. Because this is paying me right now. And I make this make me money in other ways. So, yeah, some people go for the shine and all that. Oopsie, oops, that's, that's fine. I want the money. Run me my money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And if you're talented, you're good enough, you get your money. Just don't shit on people. I don't shit on people. People may shit on me, but I don't shit on people. You know what I'm saying? When you ask me to come here, I'm here. I didn't cancel. I ain't never got late and all that. I don't do that. This is business. You know what I'm saying? And I appreciate when you came to me. So I take it seriously. I take this business seriously. I'm, I'm, I, am, I am really joy in love with what I... This is lucky, man. I wake up. We get to wake, wake up and do what we want to do. That's right. 100%. Huh? You know what I'm saying? And if you don't understand that, I tell people this. This is one thing I'm going to leave you all with. I try to tell folks this. And I had to learn this about eight years ago, in this business or anything in life, enjoy the journey because you cannot control the end. You may never be a big star, richest motherfucker, but you can enjoy the journey. So what you control, what you can control, why not enjoy what you control? I used to go eat steak at Lies. I had my wife with me when I was married. I used to, we, we, I go out of town, come back on a Sunday, we go to a nice restaurant. I'm eating the steak and lobster. I ain't paying attention really. I'm thinking about other shows. I didn't enjoy the moment. I got a, I've had luxurious cars and shit. They just became cars. Like, no, hold on, P. This is a Mercedes. Enjoy this, motherfucker. You work hard for this. Keep it clean. Ride. Enjoy it. Shoes I buy. I enjoy it. Food I eat. Everything I do, I enjoy now. When I, before, I was like, this ain't nothing but some shoes. No, it ain't no nothing but shoes. Niggas can't afford these. Maybe we can't get these in their hand. So I'm going to enjoy the fact I got these. You know what I'm saying? Whatever way I got them, I got to enjoy that. In fact, I can get stuff. I enjoy that. So I try to tell folks, enjoy the journey. Sometimes we stress too hard on the end result and forget about wow. the journey. You fuck around, get a heart attack and shit, and before you know it, you didn't get to the journey. You don't mess up the whole, I mean, the, the end result. You don't mess up the journey. So enjoy it, especially when you're doing something, making money for something you want to do. You know what I'm saying? Not have to do. So when you got something out here and you're doing something, y'all, enjoy it, man. And I enjoy it right now. I am in love with what's happening with me. And speaking of that, prayers out to Jamie Foxx. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Prayers out to him. I think he's doing better now, right? Didn't he? Yeah, he's doing, he's better. doing better. There you go. But he's mm -hmm. still in the hospital. Oh, okay. 
Hey, um, so tell them, how, tell, tell them everywhere where they can find you at Pierre, how to get in touch with you. Oh, my man right here, Jack Thriller. That's as simple as that. There it is. There he is. God, Jack. <laughs> there it is. There it is, man. Hey, like I always say, you just can't say you're really something you got to be, man. Hey, tune in next time. New Jack Thriller City, man. I'm going to have the biggest and the best. Yeah, Pierre, yeah. thank you for coming through. Thanks for having me, brother. I, mean, I love you, too. Man. I love you, too, brother. For real. That is. Let's take some pictures. Yeah. Weird. Sign us out. If your mattress is older than 10 years old, older than 10 years old. That was so fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you liked it.